Hello and welcome to the Computer Network and Cisco Packet Tracer tutorial for beginners. In this tutorial, we are going to implement the small LAN by using the Cisco switch. In previous tutorial, you'd learn how to connect two PC wire crossover cable. In this tutorial, you will learn also about the Cisco IOS and its command. The Cisco IOS is an operating system for Cisco devices. There is a great idea behind the IOS. By learning one command line interface operating system, you will be able to work with almost any Cisco products. The IOS is extremely flexible and there are a lot of features in IOS. But because it's a command line based operating system, it may, um, I don't say it's, it's not user friendly, but it may be a little difficult for beginners. Okay, so let's start it. First of all, uh, please choose the switch section from here and we can select the 12950 series with the 24 port switch, drag it on the working environment. Then we want to add some end devices. Select the end devices, go to the PC, add two PC, it's enough. Also, it's a good idea. We add the one server here. Okay, let's add one laptop also. Okay, these are our devices for this tutorial. First of all, I'm going to configure this server as a DHCP server to serve the IP address automatically. To do this, you just need to click on a server. OK, the configuration windows will open. Go to the desktop. I set the static IP address for this device, 192.168.0.2. And we can set the subnet mask, the default class C subnet, subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. No need any default gateway and DNS server yet for this lab. OK, close the windows. The IP is set. Then go to the config tab. Here you can see the all services which are available for the Cisco Packet Tracer server machine. For example, you can set the HTTP server, the Cisco server, in the packet tracer have an internal web server or DHCP or um, most famous of the FTP, the email server, even the AAA for security purpose server. Click on a DHCP to set the DHCP. Okay, just check that the server service is on. Set the one full name. Okay, is a LAN local Area network and the default gateway DNS server for this lab don't need to do any changes. Then start IP address 192.168.0.0. Okay, it will be a good idea if you reserve some IP addresses for your server segments. So I asked my DHCP serve the IP address start from that 11 address. Subnet mask no need to change the default class C subnet mask and here is a maximum number of users. Because this is a small LAN and we don't have the, too much users, I just set the 20 user, which means that this DHCP server will be able to serve 20 IP addresses at the same time. No need to change any TFTP server address and just press add and then save. Okay, our DHCP, our new DHCP pool will add to this server. Just close it and before I'm connecting the, these PC and devices to the switches, let's take a look at the Cisco IOS inside the switch. In real world, you must connect the, your Cisco devices, which is a router or a switch, with the console cable, a special design cable, to the switch console port, to the PC serial port, and by using a terminal application, connect to the switch. By the, the Cisco Packet Tracer will provide the simpler way. You can just click on a Cisco devices, then go to the iOS command line interface. 
this is almost similar to the real world iOS and you can simulate the well known Cisco iOS commands in this environment. Ok, we are going to press enter to get started. Now we are in the first mode of the Cisco iOS. There are several uh, user or several modes for the Cisco iOS. First of all, as you can see here, the switch and the right angle bracket symbol here, which means that we are in a user mode or user exec. In user mode, actually, you can't do too much things. You only can enable the, or do the basic commands such as uh, ping some other devices or just monitor some basic features of your device. Uh, to see what commands you can run on this mode or any mode of the Cisco iOS, you just need to type the question mark. Ok, after typing, the all commands which are available in this mode are displayed. And you can see we can ping or show or tell net some, some basic features of the Cisco device. The next mode which helps you to verify and monitor everything on your Cisco device is privilege mode. To go to privilege mode, you just need to use the enable command. And the small right angle bracket will change to the pound symbol and in, you are in a privilege mode. Uh, in privilege mode, you can view anything on device and get the, all the information about the device such as the IP address, the security issues, passwords and everything. But you can't configure or change anything. You can see I use the question mark again and the number of the commands I can use are more than the user mode. And you can see this is a more, I can press a space, go to the next page and see lots of commands here. And you can just compare with the exec, user exec mode. And in privilege mode, as I said, you can just verify and monitor the devices. And Usually we use the verify command which is the show command. For example, you can type the show, press a space and question mark and these are the whatever you can see in your Cisco devices. For example, show version is a good example. You can see in a show version, the Cisco iOS will show us the iOS version which is um, installed on this device or the model name of this device how many interface these devices have and all other information even such as the, the motherboard serial number, the power supply part number and all the useful information uh, for your monitoring your device. But as I said you can you cannot config anything in this mode. To do the configuration you must go to the uh, config mode. You can use the configuration terminal to go to the global config mode. For example, configuration terminal. This is the, the command helps you to go to the global config mode. By the way, when you press enter, the prompt will change to such a thing. And you will see, in a, you can see you are in a config, global config mode. I want to show you some shortcuts about the Cisco iOS. Uh, I exit from this mode and there is a great feature in the Cisco iOS to use the shortcut. As you can see previously we typed the configuration terminal and you can use the shortcut con T to go to the global configuration mode. There are, um, you, in this mode you can uh, change or configure whatever you want in a general purpose of the device. But if you want to go more depth, you must go to the other modes like a interface config mode. For example, if you want to do the general configuration on a Cisco device, you can do from here. If you want to set the password for the, your Cisco device, you can do it on the general configuration mode. But if you want to do the sum setting on a specific interface, you must go to the sub interface configuration mode by using this command. For example, interface fast Ethernet 0 1 and press enter. 
as you can see the prompt will change to the sub interface configuration mode and you can set for example IP address for a specific uh, interface you can there are several ways you can come back from the configuration mode first of all exit come back one step uh, back and or you can use the control Z on a keyboard to totally come back to the privilege mode um, the Cisco iOS has a great ability to create the shortcut for you for example uh, just press the SH and then tap is uh, complete the command for you in the next video and uh, coming up video you will become more familiar with the Cisco iOS uh, in a part two of this video, you will learn how to implement our small plan via the Cisco Packet Tracer. So, bye for now and see you on a part two of this video.